what about like refinancing on a property that you've taken sub to? Is that something that you've done at all? Yeah, I refied seven last month. Um, and so, and then I have one that's re literally closing today on a refi. So yeah, I've refied a bunch of them. Yeah. So are there any issues that you're thinking about of like, how does that work or? Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I brought up too, is like, you know, say we get into, you know, position, maybe let, let, let's say I bought my house sub two, right? When I bought my house, you know, maybe somebody had just bought it before me. They ended up upside down. They were in a position that they were like, oh, I need to just get out of here. So I come and I buy my house sub two thinking about what I was thinking about when I bought it, which is there's, there's some development going in down the street. I know that there's going to be appreciation over the next couple of years. So if I just hang on to it sub two for two years and then do like a cash out refi on it, I'll be able to pull equity out, drop the rate that that person had into a, a much more desirable rate. You know, if they were in an FHA loan or something like that, put them into a conventional. Now they're off financing. I own the house in full and I'm the person on finance uh, for the house and I'm able to pull equity out. Is So, when I was wrapping my head around that, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, well, when we go to try to generate a payoff statement with the other mortgage company and they see this totally different person's name on it, you know, like, I'm like, what happens in this instance, right? And so I go in this and I tried to This is perfect. Ask. One of the ones I did last month was a primary residence of mine. The McClellan house I bought for $208,000, 10000 down. So I took over a loan, an FHA loan of $196,000. I put 12, 15 grand into it. So I'm, you know, cash out of pocket, 25, give or take thousand bucks. I'm into it, say around, you know, one or two 15 ish, you know, give or take, right? So I bought that in 2019, just lived in that as my primary residence for a year. And then I turned it into a rental after I moved out. And so it's been a rental since last year. And then about three months ago, I just refinanced it. And I had, there's FHA financing and Melissa something's name wasn't <laughs> right. obviously mm -hmm. not my name. No, right? it's not Cody so, <laughs> Yes, exactly. So, so here's what happens is I go to my title company that I'm going to refi it with. And then I go to my, uh, the lender that's doing the refi. All the new lenders doing is they're, you know, they're going to, uh, make sure the title company requests the payoff. I had the portal to be able to just go in and I clicked, you know, get payoff and right. then I just sent it to the title rep and then they had the payoff. But um, in the case that you don't have that, the title company can call for it and they're, they're going to give it to the title company if they have the file for that property to be refinanced. Like the bank doesn't care. So literally all that happened was I got, thankfully I had the online, so it just made it easier. didn't even have to call anybody, but I could have called because I had that limited power of attorney and requested a payoff and then been able to send it to my, uh, to my title rep if they weren't able to get it. Right. And then they had it. And then the new lender that I brought in, because the FHA loan that I had on it was like 4.75. And then I went and got, I got, I got a commercial financing on it because prices have went up because of, I think more so inflation than actual appreciation. But the property is now worth 350. It was worth 250 when I bought it. So I got it for, you know, decently under market value, not crazy. Um, but now it's worth 350 and I only owed like 180 something on it at that point. And so cash out refied, I put, I took like 22 grand that I took into my pocket and then I roll and I just moved that into another acquisition of a deal that we were buying. And then I had a new loan. My mortgage actually went down. I got like a 3.675%, um, on that one. And so my cash flow went up. I took cash out to go buy another deal. And then I got into a 30 year amortized loan. That's not. Um, an FHA 4.75% 4, 4 right. loan. So everything about that payment dropped, you know? So that's, that's yep. exactly what I was thinking. Is like, I feel a lot of the people that I would probably run into, you know, are people who, you know, they're already buying FHA loans or houses with, you know, 56.5% DTI. So it's <laughs> like, all, you, all it's going to take for you is you and your significant other to get into a fight and one of you to walk out. And now you don't have, you can't afford this house anymore. You know, and I, I see this pretty regularly where people are kind of buying outside of their means. And I'm like, that was the house that I got on the Cullen was the husband, wife were splitting. Yeah. You know, and can't afford it. Can't afford it by myself anymore. I could barely afford it with, a, with my significant other. Uh, mm -hmm. so that, that's kind of, you know, where my head was at when I'm looking at it as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to hear that that was actually a pretty, you know, streamlined and easy process for you. Mm -hmm.